Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Mac OS 15 Sequoia has been out for a little while now, but there's 15 settings you need to know that will make the experience a little bit better or customized for you. Now, the first big feature of Mac OS 15 was tiling. If we go into Safari and we want to tile a window, we can just drag it from left to right, but it actually adds a margin this time around. So if we go in and maybe open the app store, so let's open the app store here, then we'll bring it over to the left. We'll bring this one to the right and you'll see we have a little margin here or a little space between the windows. If you want to get rid of this, it's pretty simple. Just go into your settings and within settings, all we need to do is go to desktop and dock. And then under desktop and dock, all you need to do is scroll down until you find tiled windows have margins, disable this and you'll see they come together. So again, watch right behind here. If you want the margins, you can leave them. If you want the full use of your display, turn that off and it will fill in everything. And within a window, if we go to the green dot here in the upper left of each window, we can see our different tiling options. We have more as far as full screen, we can fill and arrange, but you can actually completely customize this to make it easier to use with keyboard shortcuts as well. So let's go ahead and close this window. Then we'll go into settings. Under settings, we'll scroll down all the way to keyboard. Within keyboard, we'll go to keyboard shortcuts. And within keyboard shortcuts, what we want to do is go down to app shortcuts. Under all applications, you'll see we don't really have a whole lot here other than show help menu. We can create a new shortcut that lines up exactly with what we have with some of our options here to tile the windows. So for example, this is left, this is right, top and bottom. If we want to customize this, just add here, click the little plus button. Under all applications, we'll title the menu left. Then under the keyboard shortcut here, just click in here and then hold on the shortcut that you want to use. So in my case, I'm going to hold option and then the left key, then we'll click done. I'm going to do the same for right. So we'll go ahead and again, I'll title this right. Then keyboard shortcut, hold option, tap the right key, tap done. Now that we're in maybe Safari here, if we're in the Safari window, I'll hold option, tap left, it scales to the left. If I tap right, it goes right. If I tap up or down, it doesn't do anything but scroll while holding option because I haven't created that shortcut. But if you want to quickly switch between them, you can do that now using keyboard shortcuts. One other thing you want to check for your window in general is when you double click this top area here, this is customizable a little bit different now. So you'll see it sort of just zooms in at this point and goes back, but we now have a new option for this. So again, in our settings or preferences, go to desktop and dock and under desktop and dock, we have double click a windows title bar to and zoom minimize or fill fill is a new option. If we want to make it full screen, double click, it goes full screen, double click again, and it does nothing. So if you want to bring anything full screen, we can double click, then we can use our shortcut again, hold option, tap left and it goes left or right. So if you want to use that, you can then enable it just to make things a little bit easier. AirPods has an option I would recommend checking out as well. If we connect our AirPods, once they're connected, all we need to do is go into system settings again, go to accessibility, under accessibility, go to audio, and within audio, scroll down. You'll actually see new options for tune audio for. So we can actually have a custom audio setup or tune it ourselves to sort of bring up the vocal range, brightness, or a balanced tone. We can also optimize this for sounds. So we have soft or slight, moderate and strong. So if you want to change that, you can, it says soft sounds will be boosted slightly, moderately or strongly. And then you can play a sample to make it sort of optimized to whatever you want just by listening. So you play a sample, it comes through the AirPods, you can actually hear what it is and then sort of change this based on what works best for you, whether it's vocal range, balanced or brightness. I'll leave it on balance, but if you want to customize this, it's available now. Now to keep your Mac storage optimized and to clear cache, today's sponsor Clean My Mac is an application I've been using myself for years as a simple way to manage storage and now they've redesigned it to be even better. Smart Care simply and quickly shows me what's using space on my Mac 
looks for threats, helps optimize performance, and checks for clutter. Cleanup helps you easily find large mail attachments, cached files, and system leftovers, and finds up to 27% more junk than before. It also shows you duplicates of photos, videos, documents, and more, and helps you easily compare them before you remove them. You can view old and large files using your storage in a simple to use way that lets you decide exactly what you want to remove. Additionally, it has malware removal options if you want to do a scan for vulnerabilities, and the built-in assistant gives you an overview of your Mac's health and what you may want to do next. It's fast and simple and comes with a seven day free trial and is available in the Mac app store as well. Be sure to check it out for yourself with the link in the description below. Mac OS Sequoia adds an all new passwords app to easily manage all your passwords. Let's go into this and within passwords, if we go up to the option menu in the upper left, go to settings within settings, there's a couple things you may want to enable. You can show your account as titles or websites. I find it easier to show it as websites when you want to actually enter a password. And also you can show your passwords in the menu bar. So now you have a little key here to show your passwords. So then in the upper right, we now have the option to view our passwords right in our menu bar as well. One of the new features with macOS Sequoia is iPhone mirroring. If we go ahead and open this, we'll connect. Sometimes it gives me an error there. So we'll tap connect or click connect. Once it's connected, we have some preferences we could change. So if we go to system settings within system settings, if we go to desktop and dock and scroll down to the widget section, Apple's actually listed this here. We can actually switch between different iPhones we want to use. For example, here's my iPhone 16 pro max in black. I could switch to an older iPhone. If maybe you have a different one, you want to try out an older iPhone you want to connect and use this for, you can actually switch here. Also, it helps if maybe you can't get it connected, make sure that this is set properly. Also, if we go to our iPhone mirroring preferences or settings, Within settings, we have a couple different options. One I would suggest if you're sick of actually entering your password over and over, you can have it ask every time or automatically authenticate. I changed it to automatically since my iPhone's right next to me anyway, and it says access your iPhone with this Mac whenever the Mac is unlocked. You can have it ask every time if you want to, but this feature works best for me just to do it on its own. Again, if you're having issues with it, you can reset iPhone access and start over, then it will typically work properly again. With the introduction of Mac OS Sequoia, Apple added a new feature or setting that many people are not aware of that's available to websites that play video. Whether you're on YouTube or another website, maybe you're watching a video. This is Apple's AirPods 4 video. Just go up to the top here, click view, then go to enter video viewer, and now it separates it out. If we click these arrows down here in the player, we can switch to picture in picture, then minimize the other window, and we have the full video available here. We also can of course resize this if we want to, we'll bring it over here, resize it, or we can go back into the main video viewer. Then if we click the button again, we have playback speed options, or we could send it maybe to a home pod or maybe an Apple TV. So that's something new that makes it much easier to use and is available for everyone with Mac OS 15. When it comes to privacy and security, there's a few things I would recommend checking. Go into system settings, then go down to privacy and security within privacy and security, scroll down all the way to the bottom where we actually have the option for analytics and improvements under analytics and improvements. I typically turn all of these off. Now you don't have to do this, but this is something I typically do as I don't want to send this information, even though it's anonymous and private, I typically like to keep the analytics here. Sometimes I will share them with app developers, depending on the app I'm using, but in general, I turn those off. The same is true with Apple advertising under the privacy and security menu. Here I turn off personalized ads. You could leave this on, but I typically leave it off where it says turning off personalized ads will limit Apple's ability to deliver relevant ads to you, but will not reduce the number of ads you receive. I don't really want them having any of that information. So I turn it off altogether. Also locations is something else I would recommend going over. So if we go to location services up at the top of privacy and security, there's different applications that may or may not need access to your location. Some of them, such as maps, it makes sense so that you can know where you are within the map itself. But again, you could turn this off entirely if you don't want it. Find my makes sense if you're using that because you'll need it. Or if you want a web browser to know, or you don't, you can turn it off or on. Go through every one of these system settings and turn it on or off based on what you're using. So if I don't want it in voice memos, 
I'll disable it. So again, just go through here and customize what works best for you. Also, if we go down to system services, go to details. Some people recommend turning off significant locations. I typically leave it on, but if you want to keep your device more secure, turn that off and it won't use any of that information. You can also see what has recently used your location if this is purple typically. So that's on the iPhone as well, but you can see the location icon in the control center when system services request your location. Just like on an iPhone, I would recommend enabling this so you can see when something's using your location if you want more information about that. Another feature that's great with Mac OS 15 has to do with Wi-Fi. Go into Wi-Fi, and within Wi-Fi, go into details under your current Wi-Fi connection. Within details, you'll see private Wi-Fi address, and there's a new feature called rotating address. This changes your actual Wi-Fi Mac address every so often, making it more difficult to track your Mac across the web. So you can leave this to off or fixed, but I typically change it to rotating. If you find you're having issues, maybe getting to websites, you may want to change this back, but typically it doesn't seem to interfere with that, at least for me. There's a feature I would recommend if maybe you need some larger text on the display, or you just want to see something clearly. Go into system settings, go to accessibility, and Apple has finally added hover text to the Mac. If we enable this, we'll enable hover typing as well, we can press the command key to display a large text view of the item under the pointer. So we'll hold command and we should see something here. So there we go. As I'm moving the pointer, holding command, you'll see it says hover text, hover typing, and then we can get a better view of what's actually here to make it easier to read. The same is true when maybe we go into a note with a note. Now I have the cursor blinking and I can say, this is a new note. I am trying out hover text. And this shows you everything right on the screen in a much larger view, making it easier to see what you're typing. So if that's something that would be beneficial to you, I would recommend enabling this or at least trying it out. So those are 15 settings or more that should help with getting the most out of Mac OS 15 Sequoia. There's other features and options throughout. And if there's anything else you want to see, or maybe there's a feature you use regularly that I didn't mention, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.